In this video, I am gonna cover how I make wood skateboard molds. I'm going to briefly go over the process. There's going to be a lot of things I leave out, but I want to show you just the overview of what is going on. So the first thing that I do is I create 3D models of the skateboard mold. And there's two parts to the mold. There's a male piece and a female piece. And these get pressed together, not the 3D models, but the actual mold pieces when they're made. And that's how you form a skateboard, uh, or one of the ways you can make a skateboard. The other way is with a vacuum bag, which I've shown on this channel quite a bit, uh, called the Roar Rocket Method. And the 3D models are necessary for this because I am going to use those to create instructions for a CNC router, which I'll explain what that is later as well. So first step is generating these 3D models. The next step is preparing my wood that I'm going to turn into blocks to carve the mold out of. The wood I use is called Baltic birch plywood and I cut the wood into strips. I take these strips and stack them together until I get the width that I need for the mold. So here are the pieces of wood that are all cut. This is, they are four inches thick, or rather three quarters of an inch thick, four inches wide, which is gonna be the height of the mold or the starting height of the mold. I'm gonna machine that four inches down because when I glue it up, the surfaces won't be, won't be flush. So both sides of the mold are gonna be surfaced. So that four inch thickness is going to get cut down to about three and three quarters of an inch. The overall length is a little bit more than 35 inches. 35 inches is my minimum. And I'm gonna glue them all up now. Actually, first, before I actually glue them, I'm going to clamp them together and just kind of arrange them. Some of these pieces of, are of wood were cut with the grain going lengthwise. Some of them are cut with the grain going widthwise. So I'm gonna lay these up in a symmetrical way and help ensure that, or I'm going to ensure <laughs> that the lengthwise grain is on the outside of the mold because when I machine this, this is gonna be way less likely to chip than the vertical grain when I'm machining it. So long grain on the outside. And like I said, just checking the dimensions of everything and just getting my clamps set up at the correct uh, widths for clamping everything together. The reason I glue up the blocks in the way that I'm gluing them, because you might be looking why don't, and saying, why don't you just cut the wood into strips and stack it all horizontally, is because the mold will be stronger under the forces that we're going to be applying to this when the strips are vertically laminated, which is what I'm doing here. It's important for me to give myself a little bit of a buffer in terms of the width of the block, the strips, and the length, because sometimes they shift around, and if I made these the actual height and length of the mold, when I trim everything down and clean it all up, I'd actually end up with a mold that's slightly smaller than I intended. All clamped up, you can see there's some squeeze out of the glue, which means we've got enough glue in there. This is gonna be a nice solid bond for a solid block of wood. <laughs> I then get files or the instructions ready for the CNC router. A CNC router is kind of like this awesome robotic carving machine. <laughs> and what it does is it takes instructions to make whatever it is that you've designed. So you need to 
create a design either in 3D or in 2D, and then process that design into instructions for this machine. The first set of instructions I am going to be making are instructions for flattening or surfacing the blocks. What this does is it creates a flat surface on the top and the bottom of the blocks so that everything is nice and square and flat. Because if I didn't do that, the, the, the mold wouldn't sit well in a press. Next, I generate a rough cut, which is like a, it's, it's a bulk material removal operation. So that's like carving out a lot of material for the molds. This is usually the longest cut for the mold making process. And lastly, I generate a finishing cut, which smooths out what was left by the rough cut. And this is basically what you need as a minimum to have your molds. If you look closely, you'll see that this set of molds also has notches in it. And those are, they serve two main purposes. One is to align the molds on the press to make sure the surfaces are perfectly lined up for an even pressure press. And the second reason is to help register the veneers in the press so that when you open it, you know where to mark your center line and mark your truck holes. Once the finishing cuts have finished, I then will sand the mold surfaces smooth. And it's important not to sand too much here because you don't want to create divots or anything like that on your mold surfaces because these have been precisely machined to have just the right curvature to create an even press for your board. If I had a divot or something, I wouldn't have a nice even press and I would leave room for something like bubbles to occur or I might crack veneer if there's uneven pressure happening on the press or you might get boards that delaminate. So having those good mold faces are really important. The last step of the process is clear coating and I just apply a few coats of polyurethane and this just protects the wood and helps the mold last longer than if we didn't have it. So that is the very brief process of how I make wood molds. I hope you found this video interesting. And if there's any more of the process you'd like me to talk about or get into, let me know in the comments. And Thank you for watching. Please share this if it has helped you and you've enjoyed it and have fun skating and creating.